Hello and welcome to another VSG Expanded video. This episode is a companion to the Data Center Policy Design chapter of the HPE Aruba Networks Validated Solution Guide. You can read the full content by following the link in the description below. Today we're going to look at how the CX10000 switch can improve the security posture of your data center while also improving performance and reducing costs. This is achieved primarily by leveraging a programmable DPU developed by AMD Pensando that allows us to perform accelerated policy inspection in hardware on a top of rack switch. So let's dive in, take a look at the details. We're going to take a couple of minutes to provide some additional context needed to consider the advantages of the CX10000 switch in the most common data center design used today, a spine and leaf architecture with an eVPN VXLAN overlay. This environment consists of a set of leaf switches, which in our example are CX10000 or 10K switches. The border leaf switches could also be 10Ks or another switch depending on your needs and all the leaves are tied together by a spine layer with the links between spine and leaf switches being routed. We add to this a full mesh of VXLAN tunnels between leaf switch racks that are dynamically brought up using eVPN VXLAN. This facilitates an overlay tunneling scheme that allows us to support multiple VRF routing instances, although our example only has one for simplicity, and in this case a green and purple VLAN that are distributed across to all leaf switches. This allows us to connect hosts into the overlay, Hosts in the same VLAN are virtually bridged over the routed links, and in this way, all hosts in the green VLAN, irrespective of being in rack 1, 2, or 3, are tied together and layer 2 adjacent to each other, and the same is true for the purple VLAN hosts. In this general topology, we can configure each VLAN on every top of rack switch with a virtual distributed gateway so that the IP next top of every host is on its directly connected top of rack switch. So whether communication is layer 3 between subnets or layer 2 on the same subnet, we have a consistent set of three network switch hops between hosts that are in different racks, which is efficient and has consistent latency. There's a lot more detail to the spine and leaf with eVPN VXLAN model, but now we have enough context for our CX10K discussion. The spine and leaf model is optimized for network connectivity, and it is always difficult when we try to shim security on top of a networking model. We tend to compromise on both networking and security in order to come up with something that is acceptable for both, but optimal for neither. With that, let's take a look at the most common solution for adding security to an eVPN VXLAN data center. We can add a centralized firewall and connect it to all or most overlay VLANs. In this case, both the green and purple VLANs, and then use the firewall as a policy engine. In order to enforce policy, we have to punt traffic up to the firewall, but when we do this, we reduce the efficiency of our network. First, we're going to move the distributed IP gateways from the top of rack switches to a single central location on the firewall. Now, any traffic that needs to be routed between subnets will go to the firewall for policy enforcement. Communication between hosts on different subnets will take three network hops to get to the centralized IP gateway on the firewall. The firewall itself becomes a fourth hop, and then there are three additional hops back to the destination. This results in a total of seven network hops between routed hosts and doubles the consumption of the network fabric for the same communication we had before we introduced the firewall. We also create a network bottleneck. All network traffic between subnets is hairpinned through a single point in the network, and since 80% of network traffic is internal to the data center, this point in the network has to be scaled up to handle the traffic load, and it can be very costly to scale a firewall up to handle this level of traffic. The firewall's position in the network is also a single point of failure. So at the very least, we should add a second very costly firewall for some level of redundancy. From a security perspective, we can only enforce policy between hosts in different subnets. Hosts that are on the same subnet, whether they are in the same rack or distributed across racks, won't have their traffic go through the firewall policy engine, so we can't enforce any policy between them. It is easy to see the network issues introduced with a centralized firewall, but we are willing to sacrifice a little on the networking side to make our data center more secure. Whether it's protecting against data exfiltration, ransomware, or some other cyber attack, lateral movement and communication between hosts is key to allowing a threat actor to be successful. The centralized firewall model can only apply policy to a subset of hosts where communication is between overlay subnets. Although we've reduced the attack surface, communication between hosts on the same subnet is not subject to any security policy at all. 
So let's take a look at how HPE Aruba networking can improve the security posture of your data center without sacrificing network efficiencies by using the CX10000 as a top of rack switch. The CX10000 has 800 gigabit per second of stateful firewall capacity implemented in hardware provided by two onboard AMD Pinsando DPUs. So when you use the 10K as a top of rack switch, we can apply firewall policy in line to data flows using an optimized spawn and leave traffic pattern. There is no need to add extra hops to the traffic flow to achieve our security goals. So from a networking perspective, we get the full benefit of our spine and leaf architecture with no need to consume additional fabric capacity just to apply policy. And instead of creating a potential performance bottleneck in our network, we distribute policy enforcement across the collective set of top of rack switches. From a security perspective, we can inspect traffic that is routed between subnets, just like when using a centralized firewall, as both overlay routing and policy inspection happen on the 10Ks. But we are no longer limited to inspecting just routed traffic. Any traffic that reaches the 10K switch can be subjected to policy enforcement. So now we can apply policy to hosts that are in the same subnet. In our example here, hosts in the green VLAN are all part of the same subnet, and we can apply policy between green VLAN hosts in the same rack or between green VLAN hosts that are tied together with eVPN VXLAN in different racks. Remember, as long as traffic gets to the 10K switch, we can apply policy. This means the 10K can reduce the attack surface for lateral movement in the data center between all hosts, not just those on different subnets, which allows us to more fully protect our applications and data from compromise and threats like ransomware. The examples in our diagram showed physical hosts for conceptual purposes, but most IP hosts in a data center are virtual. We can use a micro-segmentation strategy to force traffic between VMs and containers on the same hardware to also traverse the 10K switch so that we can apply policy to them. Let's take a look at an example with two VMs on the same hypervisor. Typically, two VMs in the same VLAN on the same hypervisor can communicate with each other through the hypervisor's virtual switch. However, when you make the VLAN a private isolated VLAN, in our example, that is the blue VLAN, communication directly between VMs is not permitted. Network traffic from the isolated private VLAN is only allowed to the associated primary private VLAN, which is the orange VLAN on the CX10000 in our example. The orange VLAN has an IP gateway assignment which is used by VMs in the isolated private VLAN to reach hosts in other subnets. But to enable communication between hosts in the same isolated private VLAN, we need to add proxy ARP to the IP interface in the orange primary private VLAN. When we do this, the switch will respond with its own MAC address when VM1 or VM2 ARP for each other. After ARP is populated, when VM1 wants to reach VM2, it will send an Ethernet frame to the 10K switch instead of directly to VM2. The 10K knows how to reach VM2 and it will forward the frame to the destination. The same process works in reverse. Now the VMs in our example hypervisor can communicate with hosts in other subnets and also with each other by sending traffic via the CX10000 switch. Remember, we can apply policy to any traffic that goes through the CX10K. So now all communication between VM1 and VM2 is subject to our security policy. In this manner, we can apply the same cyber threat protections between VMs on the same hypervisor as we do between hosts connected to different ports on a CX10000 switch. Using a similar private VLAN strategy, we can also apply CX10K policy between containers. And that's a wrap on another VSG Expanded video. The key takeaway from this episode is that the HPE Aruba Networking CX10000 switch allows data centers to be more secure without sacrificing any of the efficiencies of a spine and leaf network. Please reach out to your SE and your account team if you have any questions or need more information. For other great content on HPE Aruba Networking products, including design and deploy guides for most of our technologies, please check out the Validated Solution Guides link in the description below. Thank you for joining.